So we hear everywhere that a blockchain is agnostic. However, there is no consensus on the definition of the term. So what does it mean to you specifically? Mm, yeah, so the, the thing here is that, again, there are many blockchain uh, technologies, there are many ledger technologies, and more come out by the minute, let's say. And, and the reality is that some of them have functionalities that can be very well suited for one sector or for one particular application, uh, but then not so much for a different application. So what we, uh, what we need to find is we need to be able to uh, deliver, let's say, the value of all of those underlying ledger technologies uh, for the business applications. So being blockchain agnostic means that your different business solutions uh, can actually be built or can be operated from different underlying blockchain networks or ledger technologies. Uh, this will allow, let's say, to provide the flexibility of using or of moving to the ledger technology that actually is best suited for a particular business case. Following the first question, how does it translate and how does it relate to our own product, Marco? Yeah. So the, the challenge with being blockchain agnostic is that you have, um, you have many, as you say, you have many interpretations of the world, right? And what's happening out there is that some uh, developments are being, let's say, called blockchain agnostic, but essentially what they're doing is they're just building silos on top of the different ledger technologies. Now, this is not the most efficient approach because what this means is that Yes, you might have the professional capacity to work with different underlying ledger technologies, but this is not done in a uh, smooth or seamless capacity, right? What we call Marco and what we say Marco is, is that Marco is blockchain agnostic by design, right? This means that actually our business solutions are out of the box enterprise software applications, which is the, let's say the the vehicle by which we deliver value to our customers, those applications are, uh, they are agnostic to the underlying network, right? But they, the same application can interact with different underlying ledger technologies. So if you need to migrate, if you wanna use different instances of your applications on different ledger technologies uh, or in different blockchain networks, you will be able to do so by, uh, by using the same out of the box application, right? So there's no technical development, there's no technical pain on having to migrate from a ledger technology to another. And this is what Marco delivers in a very unique capacity. Okay, so how do companies can benefit in choosing a blockchain agnostic versus a normal structure of blockchain? This is, this is key, right? Because we talk about, yes, we're blockchain agnostic and, and how great it is to be blockchain agnostic, but the, the matter that's more important here is, okay, where's the value of all this, right? Why would a company need something that is blockchain agnostic? And the, the reason behind this is that, okay, those underlying frameworks, again, you have quite a few of them. Today you have Ethereum, Hyperledger Fabric, Corda, this, are names that to anyone working on enterprise blockchain ecosystem, they may sound familiar, uh, but there are many more, right? And, and our belief and where we've seen this sector is moving is that those underlying ledger technologies will be commoditized, right? So the enterprise will choose one or another depending on their requirements. And it is very likely that they will actually end up using several networks and several underlying ledger technologies depending on the use case, depending on the regulatory sector, uh, depending on the sector of the company itself, the industry sector. So you will have different uh, ecosystems below, different business units in your organization will be using them. You need to find a way that is efficient uh, for the, basically for the administrators of these solutions, of these digital solutions. To, uh, to be able to manage these services for their employees, right? And, and this is where having a product or having a sort of middleware that is blockchain agnostic provides a lot of value, right? Because it introduces a lot of efficiencies on managing the complex 
blockchain and ledger ecosystem that will uh, eventually uh, come into these enterprises. It also gives another very important uh, factor, which is the fact of being future-proof, right? Blockchain is still an emerging technology and there are many developments to happen. And what we are certain is that new technologies will come up, the current technologies will evolve. So we need to make sure that those business solutions that are being implemented today are flexible enough so that they can migrate and they can adapt to the developments that this technology will bring in the future. Okay, so as an added question, I would ask how does Finboot ensure this agnosticism or this flexibility of migration of the technology? Yeah, so, so again, it goes back to this uh, definition of how we are blockchain agnostic by design, right? What Marco has, again, Marco is an abstraction layer on top of the different ledger technologies. So it, it turns them into a generic, let's say, type of... Uh, of interconnection or communication uh, system, right? So what we do is from our out of the box enterprise software applications, all of their interaction is with Marco resources and with Marco, let's say language, if we could, right? So we created uh, something that we call the generic ledger operation. Now, this is a very interesting thing because it's a, it's a sort of methodology. We can call it that it's a process in which we've abstracted all of the different ledger uh, transactions or ledger operations for these many underlying networks. And we created an abstracted, a generalized, a generic uh, a, a format of how this, uh, let's say, this um, structure is going to be built. All of our blockchain applications, when they need to interact with blockchain, they do so through that generic ledger operation. So is that very much standard approach that Marco is the one that resolves. So Marco takes that generic operation and depending on the parameters and the data that we're receiving from the application, Marco will know who needs to sign that operation uh, to which ledger technology is directed at and to which specific uh, network and even node is that operation directed at. So that, let's say, is the the core value of how we deliver that blockchain agnostic uh, through Marco by design. Okay, and so finally, the last question, the other word we keep hearing is interoperability. So, and it seems that is easy to mistake both concepts, agnosticism and interoperability. So what is the difference? That's that's very on point, right? So we, we hear about blockchain agnostic and the other one is, well, we hear about interoperability, right? And it is true that uh, when we look at information out there, oftentimes they are mixed up or uh, the terms are mistaken from one another, right? What we need to understand is, okay, we've explained uh, in a high level what agnostic means. Uh, when it comes to interoperability, what this concept is trying to tell us is, look, we have different ledger technologies. How can we make them speak with each other, right? So what's happening here is, look, the basis of any ledger technology is those digital assets, right? How do we create, own, uh, trade, and uh, trace the digital assets that we are building or that we are generating in those networks? Now, if we create a digital asset in, let's say an example, an Ethereum network, that asset will not be able to communicate or to be traded or to be uh, managed on a hyperledger fabric uh, technology, right? Because these two technologies, they don't speak to each other directly. So interoperability will be, and when we reach it, because this is definitely the biggest challenge in blockchain, is when these two ledger technologies are actually able to directly communicate. And an asset that is deployed in one can actually be uh, connected somehow to the other one and also trade, trade it without losing the traceability, without losing any of the key characteristics on uh, immutability and decentralization. Now, what blockchain agnostic or blockchain agnosticism does is it takes us one step into that direction because what it does is it says, look, 
we're going to focus up here on our business uh, solutions, on our business cases, and we're going to make sure that those business cases can be deployed in different underlying ledger technologies. Now, that doesn't mean that you have interoperability because you are choosing where to deploy it. It's still going to be in one or another ledger technology. You can have flexibility to move it, but when you move it, uh, you let's say you have a before and an after, right? So if you have one application deploying one ledger technology, and then you say, well, actually, I want to move this to this other ledger technology or to this other blockchain network, you can do that. Uh, and particularly with Marco, this is a seamless process without any technical development involved. But you do have a before and an after because the digital assets that you created in the original network will not be talking to the digital assets that you're creating in your new uh, migrated network. Where we need to drive to and where we're going to is where you can actually have these ecosystems speak with each other. And that's what interoperability is all about.